years actually. And uh, as I was uh, uh, contemplating uh, about my reason to come here, I discovered two very compelling reasons, strong reasons. One was uh, to see the devotees of Slovenia, and some have come from Croatia as well, or will come. <coughs> so to, to see them, to talk with them, to, to try if I could serve you all a little bit. And the second reason uh, for coming here is actually um, a desire to present something that has been developing within me over, I think, the last 20 years or so. I had collected over the last uh, two decades um, a lot of material from the scripture, but also from uh, the wisdom of, or let us say, the insights of psychology. Um, uh, and uh, I want to talk about the uh, substantial uh, change of the heart. Uh, the, I call the seminars the art of real transformation and I will um, give uh, the seminar uh, based on on my notes, I intend to talk every evening about it, but also uh, talk about it every morning from the perspective of the Bhagavatam. So it will be, I do not really recall how many lectures, maybe uh, six lectures. I have material for a lifetime. <laughs> and uh, um, uh, before I start, I would like to do two things. I would like to say just why I'm so excited about this uh, particular uh, seminar and subject, and then I would like to um, yes, offer my obeisances to Srila uh, uh, Prabhupada. I really hope that I will be able to present something both for the older devotees amongst you, uh, something for the younger devotees, uh, something for the idealists amongst you and some of them, uh, something for the realists mm, who have thought about the, the subject matter of their own advancement for a long time and have come to either conclusions or the are in the process of, of finding answers to the questions. So yes, let us see. Uh, I, uh, I want to do something special. I was really thinking, I told the devotees when I arrived, mm, I have gone now with an airplane mm, for many, for thousands of kilometers, I think. I've burned a lot of fuel. Mm. I have also spent Lakshmi on two tickets, on Gokushna's and my ticket. And I really want that this is worthwhile, that it's not just some, something mm, where everyone asks, oh, why, what, what, what different, uh, what, what, was there something uh, what, what have you really given us, Sachinanda Swami? No, I want that you go out and say, wow, now I'm so inspired to uh, mm, look at the same subjects. You know, that I'm an eternal soul and that, that I wish to make my connection with Krishna, but with a slightly new perspective, a new, new ideas how I can make advancement. So this is my 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 desire, really. Uh, let us uh, maybe sing Jai Radha Madhava. We should keep a little bit the 
So a little bit, but a lot, the frame. I like to always uh, say to my audience, now we will sing a song you've never sung before. <laughs> Oh, not 
to a secret meeting uh, in the Goshala of the Bhakti Vedanta Mena. Under us, we heard the sound of the cows. And, uh, there was a, we were a room and we had a, a meeting uh, with the leaders of uh, the British Yatra. There were two temple presidents there. Uh, there was uh, a very well-known, uh, and there were, let me make it a little dramatic. <laughs> there were a few uh, preachers there and so on. And, and after that meeting, uh, where we became aware of certain things, a lot of things happened, uh, changed in the life of those who participated in the meeting. Mm. Uh, the question which we had in the meeting is, what do people of our time need to become Krishna conscious? We were not so uh, uh, satisfied by the results of our movement because uh, this movement is meant to, to address um, the modern man and give solutions and, and really create something in a revolution, uh, like a revolution in, in the civilization, you know, it's, it's for masses of people. Maybe not all the aspects, not all, there is some very high knowledge there, but, but the basic understanding. So after this meeting, which took longer than we had scheduled, uh, things uh, uh, happened. Uh, one of the leaders who was there, uh, started to uh, make a foundation which now takes care of seven Krishna conscious schools. In each school are a minimum of 1,500 people. In these schools the children come together and uh, chant. The, the, the school is called the Avanti school system. No? In one of the persons uh, who was in that meeting uh, became a person which you could call an influencer. You know? He coaches people like Will Smith, he's a Hollywood person, but also here in the Belk, in, in the areas in the southern South Europe areas. You all know Novak Djokovic, no? the tennis player. He's the coach of Novak Djokovic. And he, when he gives, uh, you know, he gives lectures and on the internet, he has, I think, 80 million people who w watch him. It's, it's huge, you know. Another a leader that was also interested, interesting, was so absolutely inspired that he finished the term of his temple presidentship, you know, he was the vice president, and afterwards he thought, I need to do a little homework, I need to understand the human mind in order to really see how I can present Krishna consciousness in a relevant and a doable way. He became a psychologist, something which some of uh, you know, us may not appreciate, but I'm just giving you a truthful um, picture of what happened there. It was a life-changing meeting for many of us. Uh, I became very inspired, for instance, for some of my writings afterwards, and also to give the seminars and upgrade the seminars. Uh, and they were, you know, it was 
a life-changing movement and something which totally let us say made us think was when one of these devotees who had an, uh, had studied this <coughs> gave a startling uh, point. He said uh, something that when people approach spiritual movements, they do not look for a new religion. That I, I thought, what a contradictory of terms, but continue to listen, please. It, uh, it will intrigue you. There is a movement now, a big movement, it's called the SBNR movement, which is going through the big levels of society. It means spiritual, but not religious. SBNR. There is a sense that religion um, uh, means for people to be part of a group, to believe in a certain dogma, means philosophy, which is not yet realized. There, there is a sense that to be religious means to be attached to rituals. And it is often sectarian where one group of a religion, let us say, the, I don't want to give names, but there are big, big religions in the world who sometimes aggressively bomb mm, uh, the, the, the Western civilization because they think we are the only true path. No? In regards to spirituality, and you will soon see that Krishna consciousness fits really into this. Uh, there is a sense that spirituality is about developing of the self, making true advancement, uh, realizing wisdom, not just talking about things, but as Krishna das Kaviraj Goswami, he, he writes, he has written, it, it, it means you can, uh, uh, you can test this Krishna consciousness by the change of character. No, there's a change of character. It's, in other words, transformational. And uh, there is a sense that spirituality is not sectarian, but it addresses universal principles. Like I, I'm reminded of what Prabhupada said in, in a lecture in Rathayata, he said, this is the movement of the living entity. Wow! <laughs> you couldn't be more universal, really, and so on. Uh, spirituality, in, in short words, is about transformation or inner change, whereas religion is just about a belief system. I, I would... Uh, I, I, uh, <laughs> heard the story from Keshava Maharaj about a religious man. There came, you know, one religious man came to the priest and said, I, I must confess my sins to you. And after he had finished, I, I don't want to tell you what he said. You know, I also don't know. He paid 10 pounds and then he was forgiven. Next week he came again he confessed his weekly share of sins and he gave at the end again 10 pounds and he was forgiven. Now the week after that he came and he said to the priest, I give you 20 pounds. And, and the priest said, um, <laughs> it's only 10 pounds. Why do you want to give me 20 pounds? Well, the man said, 10 is for this week, but next week I'm going on holidays. I can't come. <laughs> so for that I'm already paying an advance, you know, that the sins are forgi for forgiven. Mm. It was clear. This man had no idea about changing his ways or uh, transforming his life, becoming 
mm, uh, purified in his heart and, and <laughs> he just was satisfied to be in a religion, a member of a religion. Krishna consciousness is different. Bhaktivinoda Thakur wrote in his book, which he sent to the West, uh, he asked the question, what is the proof that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is God? I'm, I'm asking you, what would you say? Do some of you believe that he is God? Or? No, I'm... I'm, I'm uh, is this all right to ask questions? <laughs> <laughs> proof, yes. Following Prabhupada's introduction in the Bhagavad Gita, I'll, I'll repeat the introduction. Yeah. That Prabhupada was asked by one lady that what is your can you recommend a Bhagavad Gita to me? And Prabhupada said, actually, I can't recommend any Bhagavad Gita to you because in this all the Bhagavad Gita is in the West, about seven hundred of them. They've given their own. The writers have given their own interpretation. It's a yes. So Prabhupada said that uh, actually, according to the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says that he's the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And according to Madhvacharya, Ramanujacharya, uh, Sankracharya, that they also accept Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And also in the, in the Vedas, the Shastras, such as Brahma Gita and the Bhagavad Purana, Shemad Bhagavatam, they accept Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So then Prabhupada goes on that if you want to take a medicine, then you have to take it according to the doctor who prescribes it to you. You can't take it on your own. Yeah. So at least theoretically, Prabhupada said, if you want to get any benefit from the Bhagavad Gita, then at least theoretically you have to accept that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Mm -hmm. And with that, that submissive spirit, if you read the Bhagavad Gita, you can actually get benefit from it. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Thank you very much. So the question we deal with at the moment is what is the proof that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is God? This is a, uh, I believe Maharaj has answered by saying, uh, well, we have to accept the authorities which, which talk about this, like Madhvacharya, Shankaracharya, and so on, and the authorized statement in the Shastak. Mm -hmm. Any other has an idea? What is the proof of? I also, I also mentioned that if we accept the Bhagavad Gita in a submissive spirit, then Krishna might reveal to us gradually. Aha, uh -huh. so proof is a revelation. That, 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 that comes from accepting. Yeah. At least in a submissive spirit. Thank you very much. Uh, others have a. What is the proof that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we speak about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but he's of course Krishna, that uh, mm, no, he's God. Mm, proof. When he was chanting uh, Krishna's holy name, everyone who came in touch with him, their hearts just changed. Everyone started to cry and sing and laugh. Uh, when, when, I will repeat, when Mahaprabhu chanted, um, everyone who came in uh, contact with him had a profound change of heart. Mm -hmm. So much so that they cried and showed other symptoms of ecstasy. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess when, when I go longer, <laughs> then uh, maybe we go one last person. Yes, please, your good name. Uh, I guess he's drastically changed the regulation so uh, the process for this Kali Yuga. He simplified the process for this Kali Yuga. The, the Bhaktivinoda Thakur raises this question, listen to his answer. Usually the answer which is given, at least in an Indic concept, is well, well he performs miracles. And we also have this we hear sometimes, Prabhupada has sometimes used this argument, Krishna showed the universal form. That's showed, no one else can do this. If you are God, he said, then please show your universal form or lift the, un the, the Govardhan hill. No? So it's a miracle. Mm, this is definitely a good argument. 
Bhakti Vinod Thakur makes this argument and it goes uh, in uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Lives and Precepts. Mm. Uh, miracles alone never represent God. There are many who can do miracles. It is the unlimited prema or love and its overwhelming influence that can be seen in none other than God himself. It's a little bit like, yes, the Lord came and anyone who came in contact with him, we hear even about washermen, simple people who, who just stayed at the Ganga and there may be fishing there. Uh, uh, and they saw Chaitanya Mahaprabhu on the other side. Vindavan Das Thakur describes it. And they totally became overwhelmed with love of Krishna and uh, yes, they, they came to him. Uh, so, mm, mm, this, my dear devotees, is also for you important if you approach the Lord and you want to see if in your life it works, you can make a simple self-test. You can see, are you becoming influenced by what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has given to you? Are you, in other words, changing your desires? Is the, the heart, you know, is full of desires? Are you becoming uh, even more more happy, yes. Uh, once Prabhupada was asked, Prabhupada, preaching seems to be so difficult. He says it's very easy. Just show people how happy you are. <laughs> <laughs> then they want to say it works. This person is happy. I am not. I want to know his secret. No, it's a change from an unhappy person to a happy person. From a hippie to a happy, Prabhupada said. <laughs> and, and if you want it very simple, uh, 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 you must really see uh, that as you come in contact with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, if you if this if you do it properly, my dear devotees, there should be every day a little bit more of a change in you. This is the miracle uh, by which we can see. It's a change of heart. Uh, it's not enough to just follow blindly. Uh, uh, because, my dear devotees, if you follow blindly, your old habits will not change. Have you noted that, for instance, in uh, in our movement where we make a sincere endeavor to, to become purified, but sometimes it does not happen. I would say that there are many devotees who have not changed their heart. Therefore, they are often bitter and they criticize like ordinary people uh, without taking responsibility for their own spurt alive, they, like ordinary people uh, look, or, or we have many scandals because the desires in the heart have not changed. I heard we have a divorce rate even higher than the outside divorce race, rate. And some say it could be because devotees were married at a young age without knowing each other and, uh, and, and they found out things which later became intolerable and they divorced. You know, ordinary things. We have a lot of ordinary stuff. Because the heart is not changed. Why is it not changed? Because there's something very strong in every heart. It's called habits. Habits means acting and also 
thinking in a certain way, thought patterns, you would say in modern language. Habits oh, are very strong. They are called in Sanskrit sanskaras. They are deep impressions in the subconscious mind uh, which, you know, form you, which shape you. Uh, and unless you can change really your habits of thought and of you know, activities that are very difficult to, to understand Krishna consciousness. Uh, uh, Keshava Maharaj uh, said, habits are strong. If you take the age away, you still have a bit. Probably now you need to think in the English language. <laughs> Habit, H, A, B, I, T, that's how he said it. If you take the H away, H means ha ah, in your language, you have a bit left. If you put, take the A away, there's still a bit. <laughs> oh, oh. You all know this from your own practice of Krishna consciousness. There are habits which are very difficult to change. Especially things which are there in the, the subtle body. You know, we all know, I, I could, I have changed my frisura. That was when I joined Krishna Consciousness. I, it was in London. I wanted to give pleasure to Prabhupada's eyes. Uh, it was my first uh, meeting with Prabhupada, so I shaved completely. Wow, I, that was easy. I mean, I was a little sad afterwards because it became so cold up there. <laughs> but um, it was relatively easy. Ten minutes more. To change the dress was a little bit more difficult because how do I put this on, you know? <laughs> Maybe the Matajis also know to dress in a sari. You need, I don't know, half an hour of strict instructions how to do this. To change the eating habit was, was all right. I mean, there were a few vegetarian goodies which I heard from the devotees are not so good. So I, but I could manage. But my dear devotees, to change the heart? Ooh, that's difficult. I'm still working on it. Still working after all these years. Because it's in the heart where we have all these things, you know, this habitual thoughts, habitual ways, the way we are conditioned, it's all in there. Mm. Uh, uh, and therefore, very often, you know, one, one of my god brothers once told me, Maharaj, every morning I wake up as an atheist. Then I chant again, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram. I come to the Bhagavatam class, and then it's better. <laughs> then in the evening, if my day went well, I'm okay. But in the morning, oh, I'm, I'm the old guy again. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, my dear devotees, Take courage. If you stay on the path, you will eventually reach there. Even though you may have human failures and even though your old personality is difficult to change. Prabhupada said it's like washing coal. The more you wash, the more dirt comes. Take courage and stay on the path. Mm, I remember uh, once I was fly, flying from Mumbai to Frankfurt and next to me was a man who had a machine on his lap and he said, oh, we totally, we are totally off course. Of course means away from the proper route. And after half an hour he said, oh my God, we had so much wrong, you know. 
This was going on for two hours. And finally I said, will we ever reach Frankfurt? You always say, we are off the course, off the route. And this man said, yes, of course, we will reach Frankfurt. Because we have air, air pilots. You know, this machine, which I have here on my lap, tells me when we are 10 degrees off. It tells me when we are 20 degrees off. And we constantly are off the course because there are storms up there, winds, powerful currents of air movements, and the airplane goes left and right. But there's the pilot, and he has a machine much better than my machine. And he will put the course, uh, will co put uh, uh, us on the uh, 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 right course. And that's why we re uh, 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 will reach. So this, th you know, that we are sometimes overwhelmed by our old condition, by our tendency to quarrel. Prabhupada once said about his disciples, <sighs> All these Americans are good for is quarrel and sex. That's what they know. <laughs> you know, he was frustrated. He was a strong teacher. At other times, he said, "All oh, my disciples are pure devotees," <laughs> because yes, we had difficulties. Yes, every devotee has difficulty and fails, but he corrects the cause as long as he corrects the cause, he, is, he will reach. Do you remember Krishna's statement about this? Apichet Sudarajaro. Sometimes the devotee may do an act that is really wrong. He speaks even of an abominable act. But since he is rightly situated, it means he's on the right path. Uh, he's to be considered a saint because he is willing to correct and uh, himself, and he's willing to go to the ideal path. No? But what I want to say is, my dear listeners, to become an advanced devotee, a lover of God, who is free uh, from the contaminations of material existence, is not so easy. And it will not happen if you are in the Krishna consciousness movement, like members of a religion who are satisfied to believe in something, but who are not looking at their own transformation of the heart, no? and who are not thinking of realizing uh, uh, their, their, um, their spiritual potential. I will come now I will now come to the end I think you will like this part now very 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 much the human condition is a condition of failure there is a very very spiritually strong writer his name is Blaise Pascal I'm thinking all of us have heard uh, about his statements and he said uh, a lesser known statement of his is the human being is stationed somewhere between an angel and a devil sometimes he leans to the angelic side <laughs> and like uh, to some um, angel no? and sometimes he leans to the devil's side Hare Krishna. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur is quoted as saying that um, uh, we are all somewhere between Prahlad and Hiranyakashipu. <laughs> sometimes saintly, sometimes we go in, a, in another direction. At least mentally we have, we have things. Um, according to the sacred scriptures, this criticizing, this bitterness, this, this quarreling with devotees is even worse. It's called Vaishnava Parat, you, you know, is even worse than the other things. Yes, but change is possible. 
If you're willing to correct your ways whenever you go a little bit to the wrong side. Um, this year, I was, in, I was going to America. It was after, I do not know, three, uh, you know, after the lockdown. And uh, I decided to make a total America tour. I started in Florida and I went up to New York. I gave a few programs in big yoga studios on the Super Soul Farm. I knew, I think you know, Wisdom of the Sages. I danced in Ratha Yatra. My God, was this a big Ratha Yatra. My dear devotees, I have never seen so many devotees in the West on, on the asphalt as in New York. We had three huge chariots and we, we danced and chanted. We had good loudspeaker system. It was so enlivening that I thought, I never leave New York. Mm -hmm. It was so good, you know. Then, then we went everywhere. Nuvendavan. We had one rose garden Jabba course with GBC members. It was amazing. In America, they would say, "Awesome." I've learned some good new words. And uh, we had where else? We we were in Hollywood. We met Hollywood stars and, and, and many devotees, of course. We visited the Los Angeles temple where Prabhupada established how we should have a morning program, exactly how this would go. He called it his center. And we went to Laguna Beach and, and then Austria and everywhere preaching. Sometimes I counted five presentations a day. <laughs> yes, uh, and I gave one initiation to one person. This person was very qualified. She was born in the family of devotees and her father is a great philosopher. And I said at the initiation ceremony, so you will give a uh, now your initiation vows, you will get the beads. Mm, would you know, would you like to know the statistical number of those who fail in their initiation vows? <laughs> Everyone thought this German Swami is too much. <laughs> we don't look at these numbers when we give initiations. Mm. But they were GBC and Swamis and they didn't stop me. So I went on in the car on the cars. My dear everyone, how well, how is this process working for you? And I quoted a verse about this that there must be a change of heart. The verse comes from Hari Bhakti Vilas. You, I will just say it in the English, as ordinary bell metal, when treated with a certain alchemical process, can be transformed into pure gold. Similarly, an ordinary person can transform through the process of initiation into a twice-born person with a gold-like pure heart. This, of course, is an example from alche alchemy. 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 alchemy, yes. Yeah. In alchemy, you can make ordinary metal into pure gold. There are nine steps which you need to do, and the last is the conjunctio. And if you can make these nine steps, this bell metal will turn into gold. So, in the same way, initiation, this is the verse, can 
turn an ordinary person into a gold-like person. I said, yeah, but this seems to not work. Yes, I know everyone wants initiation. Give me a name, then I belong to the group. But we see, at least I see, I, I give holy name retreats everywhere. Many people, also older devotees, also GBC members, sannyasis, they come to me and say, Maharaj, Maharaj, very difficult, my 16 rounds, not so easy. Can you help? <laughs> so, is it really? You know, initiation is not just about getting a name. It's about changing, for instance, the things in which you have taste. So I said, well, in the initiation fire, why does the scripture say you take an initiation and you change your heart? Let us maybe study what is an initiation. Is it just about getting a name and belonging? And I said, well, I did profound research on this because I don't feel satisfied with my own spiritual progress. So I need to know what do I do wrong? What do I do right? What do I have to maybe learn? Maybe I have not learned. Listen, my dear devotees, just like you need nine steps in order to turn uh, gold, no, bell metal into gold, in initiation you need five steps. These are described by uh, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur in one article. And as I, would you like to know these steps, by the way? Yes. Yes. Why? We want to change. We want to change. You are saying this, or you want it? You want. You have to also, because your life is not long. But you have a brain tumor. Yes, isn't it? It is it, brain cancer. Brain cancer. So, how long? One year more? We don't know. So, it's a need to change. The five, five things are first Urva Pudra. Urva Pudra is this, a tilak. It means, uh, in translation, the path which leads upwards. An external uh, or a sign where you can see. For instance, this sign means I'm initiated in the Gaudiya path, as revealed by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and preached to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, by Prabhupada, I wanted to say. There are other tilaks. Uh, or Udva Pundras, they mean you are a member of the Ramanuja Sampradaya or Madhva Sampradaya or Hitharimangsa uh, lineage or Vallabhacharya. Everyone, this means my school is Gaudiya Vaishnavism. No? Uh, so Udva Pundra, the path which leads upwards, you need to study, okay, this is the school, what, what uh, you need to see. What, what it teaches. You all know this. It is taught in the lectures by much more, by many devotees. The next thing you need to know is tapa. Tapa means restraint. It can mean austerities. In initiation, you promise four types of restraints. You, you know? No meat eating, no uh, illicit sex, no intoxication, not even cow coffee drinking. It's it's it changes coffee the something things in the brain structure. Mm -hmm. 
and no, no gambling. I think you have heard many lectures about these four rules. These are called tapas here. Yeah. Very important. A positive path is told and then what you have to avoid. The next item is Nama. What is Nama? Holy name? Something else also? Your initiated name. You become a Das afterwards, no? a servant. This is your identity now. Uh, then there is a mantra. This is in the second, we call it in our movement, the second initiation. And fi uh, fifth is Yakya, a process of worship. We, we met today on the uh, Ljubljana airport, a devotee, uh, his name started with Gopal, and he was going to Radadesh. Mm -hmm. He's a Pujari. He has been initiated in the Pujar, Puja. I think he wanted to learn something new and so on. So these five things, the path which leads upwards, some restraint, austerities, uh, which are given by the Guru, the name, the holy name, the mantra or mantras, and yagya, a process of worship. This, this, these five elements come together. And then it works. But can I make a confession? I was interested in alchemy before I came to Krishna consciousness. And I had a friend, Lawrence. <laughs> he, he, we, he, the, Lawrence had a big, I mean, his father had a big villa. And we actually took all our money to buy all the things which you need in an alchemical laboratory. I had a book like this, which I had uh, from, from the antiquarian books, you know. There was all the description. And we wanted to become rich because we wanted to go to America. And we <laughs> it cost money. So we, wanted, we, we took some metal and we did everything wow. according to the rules as good as we can. Then Lawrence said, it's ready. The conjunctio is ready. Conjunction means that the new binding of the elements is ready. So we, 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 we locked the door. And we simply didn't want that anyone knows the secret how to make gold. And we, uh, Lawrence did the thing, you know, it is, uh, you know, we had some, some things with some vapor, vapor, you know, what is vapor? In, 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 in. Yeah, it, it, it collects and we were putting it all together and Lawrence said, now should we pray that it works? I said, well, if it helps, let us pray, you know. The, and so we did the little prayer. We were from the Christian background. We were very curious boys, but we had some piety also, something. And we put it together and it made... At first, nothing happened. Then the thing started to boil. And then I still remember... Bang! <laughs> the whole thing exploded. Our, our whole laboratory was destroyed. We were blown into the corner where we were lying. Fortunately, you know, our, our hair was born, burned, but we didn't have eye injury. Krish, I, I think Krishna protected us because we said this prayer. It did not work. Our boyish experiment failed Totally. Let me ask you, how is your process going? <laughs> how is your alchemy of the heart, the alchemical process working? Are you uh, already experiencing how an ordinary person can transform through the process of, into a twice-born person? with a gold-like pure heart. This is something you shouldn't 
not... Uh, uh, this is something for you to take home, this question. Mm. Yes. Uh, I think I will end here. The symbol which Srila Prabhupada uses uh, for transformation is the butterfly. Mm. And it, uh, are you still attentive or is, is the brain uh, function going down? Still attentive? Yes. The main process of Krishna consciousness, as the name says, it's something about Krishna and something about what? Your consciousness. These are the two things. So to be Krishna conscious means that you fill your consciousness with Krishna. No, you think about it, you, you are absorbed in Krishna. Now, Prabhupada wrote in Bhagavad Gita 8.7 in the purport, the devotee can constantly think of the object of worship, the Supreme Lord. Either Narayan, Krishna, Rama. By chanting Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. May I ask you a question? <coughs> were you conscious of Krishna when you were chanting this? Or were just your lips moving? It's a question for you to answer on you. So Krishna conscious chanting, entire tales has to do with Krishna and the consciousness. No? This practice will purify him and at the end of his life, due to his constant chanting, he will be transferred to the kingdom of God. Now Prabhupada speaks about the obstacle and this is the part of the purport I, I, I have to I unfortunately have to identify very much. The mind is fickle and therefore it is necessary to engage the mind by force to think of Krishna. One example often given is that of the caterpillar. Caterpillar in your language means Grosnitze, yes, something. Grosnitze or what? Grosnitze. But the Serbian word is different. Uh, I, I, I know how to say it, but I've. Uh, one example often given is that of the caterpillar that thinks of becoming a butterfly and so is transformed into a butterfly in the same life. Similarly, if we constantly think of Krishna, it is certain that at the end of our lives we shall have the same bodily constitution of, as Krishna. It means you have a spiritual body. <laughs> We will look at this statement a little bit tomorrow. Tomorrow we will uh, go into a part of the lecture series which is extremely encouraging. Um, we will learn an amazing ingredient in the process of transformation that we have not looked at here. Uh, you know, it's a lecture series, so not everything can come in one lecture. But which is even more powerful than these five things which you have heard about. For now, I wish you to turn to your neighbor, mm. just very briefly. Um, yes. And you should 
discuss what you understood from this lecture. No? Sometimes it helps to hear what another heard. And then we will, because I will give you afterwards an exercise in thinking. Those of you uh, who do not uh, like these uh, partner exercises can just, you know, maybe think about it on their own. Uh, uh, have you found neighbors so far? It would be nice though if you try it. It's something new, I know, at the end of the lecture. Mm. And it's like a seminar, no? Okay, start now and give everyone a chance, no? Don't just one person talk, everyone talk. One more minute, one more minute. Oh, sorry, I'm so loud. <laughs> mm. Thank you very, very much for kindly uh, engaging in this. 
Mm-hmm. Can I hear some shows of hand? What what did you understand in the lecture? Mm-hmm. <coughs> I know sometimes devotees are afraid of me. <laughs> oh, this German Swami is too much. We don't know if we will invite him again. <laughs> yes, I would like to. Krishna Laya here. It's more like that. You spoke about the, uh, that it's so difficult to give up our habits. Secunda, secunda, un momento. We were speaking about that uh, it is so difficult to give up our habits. And my question is, if I understand properly that if we just follow these five steps, but we get during initiation, this uh, Vodva Kunga and Papa and so on, then this is enough to give up the bad habits or change our habits or or we have to make some conscious endeavor. Wonderful. I will answer your question because I think it's a, it's a, it's really the at the core. Uh, Krishna Laya, please uh, if this water is hot. I don't know if it is. You would be able to see some how it changes from one thing into another. It's not so hot. But we all know, you know this when you boil your Kali tea in, in, uh, in your town in Hungary, if you apply a certain force on the water, it changes. In the same way, does your consciousness change, your transformation happens by strong transforming agents, things which work on your consciousness. Uh, Then it it, it changes. And yes, this way transformation is possible. Have you ever noted after singing Kirtan for a longer time, how your mind becomes silent and you you are not uh, inclined to lead a normal conversation. You uh, Sometimes devotees, after a long care time, when it's finished, they go, <laughs> and they don't know what to say because the noise in the mind is, is, is peaceful, has become peaceful. Something changes. Mm. The water has become vapor. What is the vapor in in the sweet uh, language, local language here? Lapi. 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 Yes, lapi. Yes, yes, lapi. Hmm. Yes, so, so one thing turns into another, but you need to have strong uh, changing agents like gold, uh, uh, no, like metal can, t- can turn into gold, but oh, you need to have strong forces working there. So I don't think automatic practice will Quick, bring quick results. By automatic or mechanic practices, the danger is that you don't go deep enough and, and change the old sanskaras which lie there. And you remain the same, and only that you are dressed now differently, have a different name, a different frisura and so on, no? Uh, Like, this is only an external change, but not an internal change. So if you want an internal change, you need to work with your consciousness also, not mechanistic practice. I think we all know this. Look at your japa. Oh, I wonder what if 
he has responded to my WhatsApp messages. Mm -hmm. Scroll, scroll. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. You know at the end of the japa, not so much has changed. But you know when you chant conscious rounds, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Yes, I know you know the mantra. <laughs> but with consciousness, no, that's the difference. Not mechanistic. Uh, then something does change. You feel different. You all know Madhava, Ketan Madhava? He some, he's known to sometimes lead kirtans for two hours. Sometimes he may lead for six hours. And, and I, I've asked him, Madhava, are you always concentrated? Two hours is difficult, no? He said, well, my mind wanders, but I feel I'm lucky when I notice that my mind wanders. Because now, when I have noticed that my mind wanders, I can bring it back. The problem is, most of the time, we don't notice. We just... <laughs> In American English, you would say, your space out. <laughs> But if you notice, zzz, the mind goes, you can space in. You can bring it back. Not too, too. <laughs> so when you notice that you are inattentive, God, congratulations, can we bring a crown to you? This is the beginning of change now. Most of the time, we are not there, really. Krishna. So I thank you very much. Are there questions, Vijayanayaka? I'm seeing you. Or would you like to say something? Any one of you, not just uh, you. I just saw you. Yes, uh, yeah? Actually, a question was raised right here. But yeah? A question was there. Yes. Uh, I, I, I think, yes, you, you, yes. What is your good name? My name is Kavi Kanapura Das. Kavi Kanapura. Yeah, now it's working. My name is Kavi Kanapura Das. Okay, sir. I'm Shadr of Shridhar Swami. Mm -hmm. yeah, so my meditation was while you were speaking, you were speaking about Krishna consciousness, that this means that we have to put Krishna into our consciousness. But this sounds easier than one can do it. You know, it, it sounds very easy, oh, you just put Krishna in your consciousness, that's it, I can do it any time. It's not like this, I'm trying for 35 years, but it's not working. <laughs> it is because the consciousness is full with so many other things. When you, when you have a glass and it is full with so much sin, then only little water can come in. Now our mind is occupied with so many other things from previous lives even, or from previous to Krishna consciousness. And throughout our days, we are sometimes seeing many things or thinking about many things, and they, they come in the consciousness. And the, when, we, when we chant, when we make a real different, a, a real effort to not be with the other things, in the mind, but switch to only the chanting of the holy name, that is listening to our own chanting, then what you will see 
after some time is that the sound of the holy name will bring the other things out of the mind. You're no longer interested in the other things. They, they will go away. It's almost like light which uh, becomes bigger and, dis and uh, expels or, or takes the darkness out. But again, you must concentrate, that is, you must fix your mind on the chanting of the Holy Name. You must, uh, the, the, the way is listen to yourself, chant sincerely. No? Listen to the sound, chant sincerely. And whenever the mind goes to these other things, then you bring it back to the sound. It's a discipline, it's, a, your, it's, it's really a discipline. Mm. And uh, then, then it will work. You will see. The, you know, Kavi Kanapur, this is a good question, very good question. The way you can start chanting, uh, making a chanting revolution is to listen to at least to the first Hari of, of the Maha Mantra. I, I would like to make an experiment with all of you because this question is so good. It is a truthful question. Mm. I would like all of us now to sit properly. Sit. Try to bring your a uh, little bit back. And I, I will now guide you into a chanting exercise where you will combine your mind with the sound of the holy name. Okay? Mm. No, 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 that's not part of it. It's just for me to find the right tonality. Hare Krishna, join me. Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. Please continue. Hare Rama. Hare now bring your attention to the first, the first Hari. Now, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama. Very good. But now bring your consciousness, your attention to the very first Hari. Yes. Very good. Bring all your mental strengths to the first Hari. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. And again, the first Hare. starts to wander, which it will most probably, mm. then we bring it back to the first Hari of each single mantra. Thank you very much for your enthusiasm, but I will sing alone. 
the new streets in Lincoln. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare.
Krishna, I have come to the end. This will be also the end of this class. I do know that there are maybe many uh, points you think about at this moment. And this is wonderful. Uh, I do hope in the upcoming lectures we will have an oops, opportunity to address more of your concerns. Tomorrow, I call this lecture tomorrow uh, by Kripa. It is a hope a lecture or a seminar point meant to instill hope. Uh, God, I thank you very much. I wish you a restful night. Um, please pace yourself. Uh, and I realize not all of you can come tomorrow morning because you have uh, other plans and other some of you need to work or take care of other urgent things no problem we will record this and uh, if you are interested you can uh, later see it on youtube or everywhere uh, or, or hear the tapes or or just uh, drop one lecture and come to the evening class as you wish i thank you very much all the best for you and Hare krishna jai sila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna,